Hey there, this is Amir Sain at the Midlands Arts Centre coming to the Future Poets Festival and I'm here for Culture Cuts. Come on, let's go find out a bit more. Ten young poets are created and designed the Future Poets Festival with help from professional poets and industry experts. The festival offers a program of workshops, exhibitions, installations, screenings, games and open mic and performances for some of the best poets in the UK. I have Lexia who is one of the Future Poets with me. So, so Lexia, how did this all come about? Um, we as the young poets uh, logged on to Ideas Tap, then we signed up for the brief and then we applied and we got chosen. Yeah. And since February we've been organising the festival. And uh, what inspired you to, to pick poetry? Um, we pick poetry because there's not enough of it. Like um, The poetry we get taught in school disengages young people, so you wanted to make something that was fun and innovative that would get young people to want to do poetry. Okay, thank you for your time. No problem. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Once upon a time, in a land where the men tattoo love and hate both on one hand, they live the family. The average fabric of woman and man, a girl and a boy, a few toys and a cat, her name was Whiskers. Some days they all sat happy together, other days plates smashed on the wall after they got flung like a discus. After a fight, the dad would play Black Sabbath into the night. The mom would blast rhythmics in the kitchen, the kids would listen to both. Okay, can you tell us a bit about how you got into poetry? Yeah, uh, I kind of got into it quite early. I had a really good teacher in uh, in school who really got us in interested in literature and poetry. And I went through the whole phase of writing really embarrassing, cringeworthy teenage poems. And then sort of self uh, self censorship kicks in. And I stopped writing for a few years and got back into it, kind of uh, 1920. Uh, uh, but you said in your your performance earlier on that you just you came to the UK later on. Uh, and so, yeah. so you, initially you must have been writing poetry in, in Polish. Polish. But yeah. then how did that change to English? Right, uh, that's an interesting question. Well, I actually did a lot with English before I moved here. Uh, and I got the degree in English literature and so on. I moved here because I got a grant to do a PhD in translation. So I was always interested in stuff that's in between languages and moving things from one language to another. Yeah. Um, so I was really fluent in English when I moved to England. And uh, it was a wonderful discovery when I figured out that I can not just write in Polish and translate into English, but actually write in English first. But everything I write ends up in both languages eventually. But how's the transition? Because some words don't fit in in both languages. Oh, be careful, because I can go on for hours on this yeah. subject. It's, yeah, what I can say now quickly is that it's very different when it's your own poetry, and because essentially you, you, you can take any liberties you want with the text, and you end up writing a version for that language. And obviously you change it slightly, but if it's a good poem in both languages, that's all I ask. Okay, so what tip would you have for budding young poet, poets? Um, read as much as you can. That's the, that's, that's, that's the most important thing. Read as much as you can, see as much as you can. Uh, that's how you will grow, that's how you, your writing will improve, by seeing great work, by reading great work. Some of it you'll like, some of it you won't like, but from all of it you will learn something. That's, that's the best single piece of advice I can give. Thank you very much. For Thank you. you. That was very Cichsze niż najcichsze cisze, echo pierwszego słowa zawsze słyszę. Thank you. Okay, I have with me Carl here. He's one of the future poets. And uh, tell me, why are you inspired by po poetry? Uh, well, the thing about poetry for me, rather than any other art form, is it feels more like a conversation between the people watching it and the people who are making it. I feel like, you know, with most like music and that kind of thing, you know, it's a kind of a fan mentality, but this feels a lot more like a conversation to me. Okay, so why did you go into poetry in the first place? Like, who, what inspired you in the first place? Yeah, okay, um, it was about three years ago, I had a workshop with one of the headliners here called Polar Bear, and uh, it was initially just a storytelling workshop, but he just had such a peculiar way of doing it through spoken word, and it just hooked me instantly. Okay. That's, uh, thank you for the interview, and uh, that's us. sometimes but not too much think of me now and again as I was in life at some moments it's pleasant to recall but not for long leave me in peace 
and I shall leave you in peace. And while you live, let your thoughts be with the living. We have to think about how it made us feel. When I am dead, cry for me a little. Think of me sometimes, but not too much. Think of me now and again, as I was in life. At some moments, it's pleasant to recall, but not for long. Leave me in peace, and I shall leave you in peace. And while you live, let your thoughts be with the living. with the John Beckerwick for, for the Poetry Festival and uh, can, can you tell us a bit more about what do you like about poetry, what's the... Um, I think what, what I like about poetry is it gives, it gives everyone a chance to say what they think and, and quite a lot of the time a lot of people, especially in the way that we live now, especially for young people like who are involved today, they don't really get that chance to say what they think and no one ever really, really stops to listen to them. poetry gives them that opportunity. You're actually a Poetry UK champion. Oh, so yeah. tell us a bit about that, like, how did that all happen? Um, in 2007, I decided that I was going to start to compete in Poetry Slams, which is the competitive form of poetry. So I wrote a load of poems that fit within the format, being under three minutes, and then went around the country entering different slams all over the place, culminating with the UK Slam Poetry Championships, which I've, I've won. And you actually have drink hip-hop theatre? You yeah. explored that, so can tell us a bit more about what hip hop theatre is. Um, hip hop theatre, in, in the in the long way of saying it, it's works of theatre through the audiovisual language of hip hop culture, which is basically plays where other speaking is rapping or poems, and the movement is dance and graffiti backdrops and hip hop soundtracks. But I work with a guy called John Z D, who's based at Savile's Wells in London. And we we toured the show for a couple of years, and, and it's, it's a really interesting mix of, mix of stuff. For, for, for me, I feel like hip hop is a language, and it's been badly represented by what goes on in the mainstream. And what hip hop theatre attempts to do is to use this language to tell meaningful stories. Yeah, so, yeah, so you, are you just into poetry? Are you into music as well? Oh, poetry, music. So, do you actually write lyrics like for raps or? I've, I've, I've written lyrics and raps. Yeah. So, but, but what do you prefer? There's, there's a slight sort of, sort of difference between poetry and. Rapping? I, I prefer the poetry stuff because the rap the rapping is very locked to a fixed beat. And it also, like I said, it's got very very sort of if if, we, if you say to a group of 45 year old people oh, I'm gonna do some rapping, they're not gonna listen. But if you say to them I'm gonna do your poem, you can do exactly the same thing and they'll actually pay attention to it. And, and the word itself carries a certain stigma which which for some people they don't really they don't really attach to, but for other people it means they're willing to hear it. Bubbles, you cry, your voice warming the air like borrowed sunshine, lending colours to the flowers in your cheeks as you chase tiny globes of fragile dreams captured in floating water. I can't look at you for all the fear, so I listen to your smile. I hear you catch one between your fingers with the faintest hiss. Wonder flies with those few that stay out of reach, but I'm glad to have seen them. So we're outside the 
outside the cinema at the Midlands Arts Centre with the showing Future Poets Festival YouTube channel. Come on, let's go check it out. <laughs> You're no less intriguing in person when you're eating so long dessert to clean the cream from the dish with your finger. In fact, some people at full tables will wish they were where you were. Go to the movies where it's dark and sweet. Okay, so, I've got Polar Bear here with me, and he's one of the main acts on the Future Poets Festival. And uh, how are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Okay, can, I, can you tell me what inspired you to do poetry? Uh, Kim Trusty. Uh, can you tell me a bit more about it? Like, why? Was it the lyrical wordplay? Or... Actually, yeah, I've always loved words. I mean, I've been writing stories since I was little. But uh, it, was, it was an event a while now in the Glee Club in Brom. And I kind of went down and saw people doing stuff. A few of them are actually here today. The main one being Kim Trusty. And I became friends with her and she started giving me little things, exercises to do and we started spending time together and writing and then I've just kind of fell for it. Yeah, so you never started out from a young age? Like, um, spoken word stuff? No, yeah. I had no idea what spoken word was until I was 25. 25, so that's a pretty late Yeah, of course. Most man. kids come in like... Yeah, of course. I mean, if I'd, if I'd have known, I mean, obviously I knew what poems were yeah. I'd, from school, and, but I'd never, I'd never read any poetry. But to this day, I don't, I'm, I'm like, it's purely about writing stories for me. Yeah. Some of them I speak out in spoken word pieces, and other ones are longer, but it was about stories. Uh, but don't you think that there's a negative connotation towards poetry that the younger generations do have? Like, maybe. What's your opinion about I mean, maybe, but you can say that about most things, I guess. I mean, I think that there's a negative, there's a negative kind of feeling towards being forced to do something, I guess. But that's that's anything. If you force me, if you try and force me to read a poem, yeah. I'm not going to want to read it. I don't think it's against poetry as such, because there are there's amazing stuff. So I think it's more about the fact that you have to do it. Anything yeah. you have to do becomes less appealing than what you actually want to do. I think. That's so and uh, what what would your advice be to young poets who are coming up? Like, what what do you go through when you're writing the poem? How do you brainstorm? Do you have a, a thesaurus with you or a rhyming book? Or? No, definitely not. Avoid them. Avoid a thesaurus. Avoid a rhyming book. I would say. I mean, just I, I for me, it always starts with an image, and then I just see where it goes. If it goes somewhere, then it becomes a piece. If it doesn't go anywhere, it goes in the bin, and maybe comes out a bit later on. Yeah. I'd say just read as much as you can. See as much as you can. Then try and not copy anything. Yeah. So it's more about the first initial idea. Definitely. Then yeah, definitely. Words. It's always an image. It's always an image. Always a detail, and then it kind of grows from there. Because I love my city. My city ain't pretty, but I love it. You see me? I love my city. My city ain't pretty, but it's mine. My city gold-plated my bones, so little bloods don't waste my time. My city raised me up to full-grown man, and now I stand in my prime. Thanks. Sorry for my sorry for the touch of life. Okay, I've got with me here Roundhouse Slam champion Jody. How you doing? I'm good. And uh, can you tell us a bit about Roundhouse and what you did there? I won the Roundhouse Slam back in 2009, um, and since then it's kind of just all kicked off and started doing poetry everywhere. And uh, tell us a bit about how the Roundhouse Slam Championship is set up. Is it like a rap battle or is it just like poetry? Uh, basically, anybody that can like is emceeing or does poetry kind of enters. It's kind of a London thing, really. I was the only one from out of London to enter. And um, yeah, you just come with your piece and perform to like judges Polar Bear, who was on tonight, hosts. And then I had some judges like Inua Ellums and also Shire and um, Kayo, and he was amazing too. So yeah, that's and um, then I won, which is weird. So what do you love about poetry? Like, um, it's just being able to tell stories. It's kind of a bit of therapy, really, isn't it? It's like all my poems are like exactly what's happened, and I know the moment and the like the person they're about, and it's just me keeping a little box of memories, but in the form that can show everybody. So what process do you go when writing poems? Like a lot. Different poets have different styles. Some keep keep rhyming books with them. How do you do it? 
that I don't um, I kind of just literally I'll be scribbling on like whatever I can find like bus tickets or anything it just kind of comes to you like I don't have like a rhyming dictionary or like a theosaurus because it just wouldn't sound like yeah. me like a lot a lot of my stuff doesn't even rhyme anymore like it'll rhyme a, a bit but not a lot and yeah it's just it, you'll go through something and be like I need to write about that because I want to show people what happened so a lot of the youth here have a misconception that poetry is all about the use of big words. Yeah. And do you think that's right or is it? No, it's the bane of my life. Um, a lot of um, poets, especially like my age and a bit younger, um, all think that poetry is going to be like how does this flower grow so well? And it's just like, mm. well, actually, we take a lot from like UK hip hop and just like modern literature and stuff. And like you'll see from the guys tonight that if none of it was like poetry out of an anthology, it was like basically stories. Like with, it's like conversations you have with your mates, but in like with a flow. So. Okay. Do you have a message for a young body art poet out there? Any? Uh, keep writing. Keep writing, and go and show people your stuff, even if it's like your mom or your cat or like anything. Just make sure people hear and get feedback and get good and never think you're too good because then you're shit but yeah that's really it nice nice thank you for the interview cool. thank you very much. i think it's been a really amazing success and i think the the strong component for me is just seeing those young group of spoken word artists holding themselves up on stage alongside a stellar lineup you know let's not forget some of these guys who are on that stage tonight have got a wealth of experience. Well, I think we've kind of raised the appetite um, for this kind of event. Um, but, of course, everything is fundraising for. So, yeah, we need to, um, I need to go away with Writing West Midlands and with some partners. And we need to put our heads together and figure out what's the next steps. But basically, we, there's no going back now. We have to carry this on and we have to do something. Amazing, actually. I'm, I'm really proud of them. And certainly for me, like Dan said, you know, everything else that they did here today, whether it was helping set up the mic or the intimate yeah. performances, um, for me, you know, if they couldn't get on stage and deliver, then for me, it wouldn't have been such a great success. But they did. Um, they just got up there. And like Dan said, they were holding their own against people who have much more experience than them. That's it for the Future Poets Festival. It's been a great day. And if you want to find out more about the performances, more about the artists, go to youth television. And uh, that's it from today. This is Amir Sain, and I'm out.